Hey there. Let me start off this morning with, uh, oh, this is uh, day six, by the way. Let me start off this morning with uh, a little sharing about uh, what happened is in the wee hours before the sun came up. I get up early every morning, and I was uh, enjoying my breakfast salad all alone in the kitchen. And I had a, a video playing, and I was, it was a uh, Dutch cosmologist talking about some obscure thing, and I was trying to follow. And it, at first, the, the, the professor was um, rather dry in his lecture. I can actually understand the first part, but as he transitioned from... Uh, um, and this is interesting. I guess this is, this is something about how uh, some popularizers of, of science for public consumption are able to keep it at the, at the, at the consumer level. Sorry about the finger every morning. Uh, at the consumer level throughout, but this guy, and he was great, but he, he tried to do that at first, but quickly he got overcome, he was overcome by, um, by his, uh, his, his deeper sense of, 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 of science, and he lost me, I was gone, but I, I was holding on, I was holding on in order to try and get some nuggets from it, I was just, I was really fascinated, in part because as the lecture proceeded, he started off kind of dry, you know, he was telling stuff, but it was interesting because I could follow. But as he got into the deeper stuff, and, and start, especially when he started talking about mathematics, and, I, and he lost me, his enthusiasm was de growing. And I was like, he's leading towards something, but it's something that I can't follow. It's like hiking behind an explorer who's, getting, who's going easy with you at first, but then getting closer and closer to their goal, but is moving faster and faster with more excitement, and you're having trouble keeping up. In this case, I couldn't keep up with, with him at all, but I was watching in part just to share the enthusiasm. And at one point, I noticed that he was his language had changed. He was he was describing. He actually said it because he, he was talking to a large audience of largely lay people, and he was saying he was saying the mathematics, and he had these equations up on the board. The mathematics are so beautiful, and at that point, he was uh, it was the, he was using these adjectives to describe the mathematics, and he was saying, "I wish that you could all see." what I'm seeing here, how the beauty of these equations. And it was then that I kind of realized, and I wasn't able to finish it because he lost me completely, and I, I, I only got a few ideas from this, but, <laughs> but the point was, I, I stepped away from that, and I was thinking to myself, that's kind of, that enthusiasm, whether it's an adventure into the wilderness or, 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 an, or an adventure in the mind, or, or, or even through science, like this, this mathematician, this cosmologist, that kind of thing is the that's my addiction uh, I'm, I'm I'm captivated by that sense I know that feeling although I can't do it mathematically I'm the guy that failed calculus you can you believe it seven times I took I really wanted to go down the road of mathematics I took calculus seven times in college and I failed a big fat F every single time before I finally gave up that was the high was, was, algebra seemed to be about as far as I could get so anyway I mean even though I tried some things I just run up against the wall and some the point was that um, there are some things that uh, oh God, there's, I think, I think that guy might have thought I was filming his house sorry Sorry, I'm getting distracted here. This is not the point of the video at all. This is just something I wanted to add at the beginning, but hopefully it'll dovetail into it. The point was the sense of adventure, the sense of change, of exploration. This is something that I share with my wife, and this may in part explain our 10 year, every 10 years we shake our lives up and restart and start over. We, like I say, hit the reset button and start over in life. And it may be because we're pursuing that. It, and, and maybe it's just putting yourself into a new situation, a brand new venue with new circumstance and different people. It doesn't mean you give up the old people. It just means you have new people. You expand your horizons. Um, that kind of thing uh, lends itself to uh, uh, adventure in a way, uh, just similar to what that, that cosmologist was describing with the math or what an explorer might find in the woods or whatever. So maybe that in part explains why my wife and I are doing what we're doing or attempting to do what we're doing right now and leaving. Now the point of this video, day six video, is I want to talk about my daughter. But, um, but I want to preface this one more thing uh, with one more thing. The, all of this could, could fall down. So I'm making these videos count down to is not count down to leaving to America, it's counting down to an opportunity which may bring us to America, which that opportunity may fail, fall through. In some ways I kind of feel like a, 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 a kid with a, uh, with a Christmas list, you know, that's got this long Christmas list, and in Santa I want a new, I want a new job, and I want a new place to live, and I want a new car, and I want a new community, and I want to maybe make a little more, more money, and I want to have a new adventure, and Santa's like, 
Did someone just take this kid off my lap and give him a lump of coal already? <laughs> You know, it may seem like I'm asking too much, but in a way, it's it's the the those, those those artifacts are a consequence of changes like this. It's not that they're pursuing each one in themselves. It's this is they're the, they're a result of making the wholesale that word I like to use because it really is. It is basically you know kind of wiping the board clean in a way or starting. It's not really that. It's moving on to a new board, right? Because you still have what's on the old board. Now let me get to the point of the video. Uh, and for the past couple of days, I've been talking about aspects of how things might change and what our goals are. Now, the, what, probably the most important in all of this is our daughter, Emily. And I wanted to touch on what our thoughts are with regards to her. Now, I've got to be sensitive um, because in a, way, in, in, in a way, I don't want to reveal more than my wife or my daughter might be comfortable with, so I have to kind of measure my words. But in part, this video is, be, is made for Emily, for uh, the future, so she'd have something to look back on and maybe think, understand the reasoning behind what mommy and daddy were doing at this, or I should say mom and dad. <laughs> I don't think we're mommy and daddy anymore, are doing at this point. So let me get on with it. Six minutes into it, gee. And I've got to, still got to call my mom this morning as I'm walking. Every Wednesday I call my mom as I walk to work. So up there, I got I got to wipe this off in about three minutes. That's good. Maybe it'll help me to conserve my words. Here we go. So all along, ever since we first came up with the idea back in 2002 of moving to Japan, we were living in the states at that time. I had this dream. I had this dream of raising our daughter such that she would have what I call a, a Japanese heart and an American spirit. A Japanese heart and an American spirit. Now the Japanese heart is something that anyone that's lived in Japan or had long uh, familiarity with the Japanese is familiar with. They are very genuinely good, selfless, caring, um, other deferring, humble people. And these qualities reveal themselves in so many ways. These qualities reveal themselves in, in so many ways. And I admire the, the culture and the Japanese people for that. And it was a dream of mine to help my daughter to have that. And the best way to do that was to bring her here. So we, so we did that. In 2003, we brought her over. We thought, let bring her through her early childhood years here in Japan and give her that Japanese heart. And that's basically what has happened. She has that Japanese heart now. She's 13 years old, and I, I can say that she's got it. So now the next step was to give her what I like to call an American spirit, which, and it's not that the Japanese spirit or the American heart are bad, it's just that they're different. And they're, 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 they're qualities, they're qualities, if you can get a little of one, I like, the, I like the Japanese spirit and I like the Japanese heart and the American spirit. I like, I like those two. And if I can kind of form a balance, I'd like to do that. So the... This point in, in her life now, junior high school, this is when the screws, early, child, early childhood is great in Japan. It's about this time, junior high school, the teenage years, that's when the screws of society begin to kind of squeeze in there. And a lot of the uh, pressures begin to, to mount. And it's, and it's really telling. And I, I would probably say that some of the better qualities of a human being are squeezed out to be replaced by qualities that are admired more in Japan, the qualities such as, such as uh, um, basically group, group allegiance, uh, the, 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 giving up of, the giving up of individuality, of individualism for the sake of, for the sake of the larger whole. That kind of stuff is starting now on my daughter. And uh, I can see it, I'm a school teacher, I teach in that same age, age group. I teach from uh, fifth to, uh, to eighth grade. And I see it, I, I can see the transition happening. She's at the very cusp of that right now. And in a way, I like to arrest that. I, I don't want I don't want Emily to go through that necessarily. I want her to to enjoy the more American version of the teenage years. Which I know there's a lot of negatives. I mean, I know people are going to jump, and I'm, I'm drawing in broad strokes here, broad brush strokes on both sides, and I'm and I'm probably violating some some conventions in terms of uh, you know normalcy. What's 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 okay to do, and maybe making some people uncomfortable. But I, and I realize I'm doing that. But I, in general, the, I want to give her the beauty of the childhood elements, but I want to give her the 
expression and the freedom and the and the individuality that come in the in the teenage and young adult years in America, and that's what we're going trying to do, and part of what we're trying to do in moving back. That's part of the reason for our timing as well. We by by moving back now, if I can get this job, we will basically give Emily a an American teenage teenage experience. She will, her first her first decade or so would have been in Japan, and her second decade um, of life would have essentially been in the, in in the States. And I think that we can give her that balance, that the Japanese heart and that American spirit in that way. So that's long winded way to say what I'm trying. What we're trying to do, and uh, although really, I, I think mostly that's my my well my my. It's funny, Nick and I talk all about a lot of stuff. We haven't actually explicitly talked about that so much. A little bit. Now the other part of it, uh, going to the to the you know bicultural thing, is the uh, language. We 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 had seen when we lived in the states that it was it seemed to be a the rare. Uh, Japanese American that actually made it to adulthood with language. We thought that if we brought Emily here and brought her through her young years here, that she would have a better chance of getting uh, Japanese. And uh, if we move her back to the states in time and English, and we think that the timing is is right for that as well. But that was not our main goal. We're we're not. That was kind of a secondary. That was maybe a tertiary <laughs> or even beyond goal. We would be happy as long as she. We're, we're happy as long as she turns out to be a good kid, a good and then a good adult. That's 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 our main goal. And if we can get these uh, other things along the way for her, then then that's good. It's, to me, that's more important than than a Harvard degree uh, or a, or a Tokyo University degree. Is that she turns out to to be a good to be a good adult woman uh, and uh, uh, someone that. Uh, Whose presence in society and in life is an enrichment uh, in in, in the, even the most subtle ways, or particularly the most subtle ways. So there's that, and then now there's finally there's the there's the families. Okay, by coming to Japan and spending the you know the last ten almost eleven years here, where if you saw yesterday's video, you see how close we are to her family. Uh, she knows her Japanese family now. She doesn't know her American family very well, um, and we're going to remedy that by bringing her back. So we've got some advantages, so some aims that we're after. Now we have some challenges too. The challenges being that if we had moved five years ago, the transition would have been easier for her. Her allegiance would have been more to mom and dad, the home, and the, the, the school would have been an easier transition. Now she's finding that she's moving away from us and finding her connections with her community and her school. And it's going to be a little, hard, a little, little harder, maybe a lot harder, to make the transition. But there's two things about that. One. Um, and I won't go into details because it's kind of private, but um, school in Japan has not been easy uh, for Emily. And, we, and it's in part due, it's due to two things. One, um, partially just, you know, a little, you know, her immaturity. She's, she's young. I mean, there's this, I wouldn't say immaturity per se. It's just her, maybe her character. She has, some, she has some growing up to do to learn how to, maybe it's the fact she doesn't have any siblings, but she's learning how to deal better with others. And, and the like, uh, and so that's part. That's one part of it. The other part of it, unquestionably, is the fact that she's uh, different. That that she's uh, she's she's a mixed race kid, and she in, in all of her experiences basically been that she's been a minority, a drastic minority. Typically, the only one in her in her class, in her grade, and sometimes in her entire well, never in her entire school. There's always been some other half kids in her school, but always in her class and in her grade. So, and that's been a challenge for her. So that uh, those things actually. So what I want to, the point I want to make is that by moving over, we're going to be giving her an opportunity to perhaps be more normalized in an American school system where the mixture mixture ratio is higher. She won't stand out so much, and we're hoping that that will help her to, to blend in because it has been a, it has been a problem. I mean, it has been a challenge. For her, I mean, a dear one and a difficult one indeed. Um, and as for the other stuff, the growing up stuff, I think that um, the th that environment will also be uh, helpful for that as well. And uh, but uh, so, I think I've laid it out in a long video, 14 minutes. So we're we're leaving for a lot of reasons, and one of which is to give our daughter a chance to gain the benefit, a little bit of the benefit of both cultures and maybe coming back to the start of the video, a chance to uh, go around the corner 
and uh, exploring some new territory. We're, we're, we're tutoring her in, in, our, in our ways, uh, hopefully without forcing her so, so much into something she doesn't She does. She actually wants to do this. She's actually uh, pretty, I see her, you know, I pick her up every day and we, we, we take a drive home together from the train station and she talks to me about it. She's excited. She, uh, she's interested in, in, what, in the changes that are going to come. Maybe she's got a little bit of that spirit in, in her that mommy and daddy have. Well, I guess I'll sign off for now. Sorry for such a long, long video. And oh, I gotta call my mom now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long stretch. Usually it's good. Actually, it's good timing because usually back there the reception's pretty bad. But in here, I can I can talk to my mom. So I'm gonna call my mom, and give her an update on things too. You guys have a great day. Sorry to be so long. I'll have more tomorrow. I think. Okay. Bye bye.